Hello and welcome back to the final part of MDEFCAM 2020. The final part is lightning talks and a final word. Uh, before the lightning talks start, uh, I have some information for you and you should be really excited about this. We decided to open the 3D virtual world for everybody, even for those of you who don't have a ticket. So you can now invite all your friends and family and colleagues and bosses and whoever to join us in the 3D world for the after party. So just go to our homepage and download the build. Uh, there is a login that you need to do, but you don't need to have the ticket for the conference to be able to join us. Uh, the password for the game is mdefchem2020 virtual world. There should be a link visible soon uh, on the stream for you. So uh, without further ado, let's go to the lightning talks. The first one is Honza Husak, who created a launcher for visually impaired people. So Honza, welcome. And you have seven minutes for your lightning talk. You can start now. OK, so hi, everyone. I'm just going to start the timer. Uh, it was really the last minute uh, answer about this uh, presentation. So I just thought, what slides should I prepare? I found the first slides from Big Launcher, uh, which we've uh, created nine years ago in November 2011. And uh, we presented Big Launcher for the first time on the Parade event in Prague. And then everything went <laughs> really great way. Uh, basically, how it started. You know this story from your life also. Uh, you are in a pub, the, your friend comes by and asks you that he has perfect idea for an app. It was 2011, so the, the time of apps for $1 and you own the, you can win the jackpot if you market it good. So uh, my mom's, phone got broken and uh, there was no replacement for her. So I thought, okay, we can just put some big buttons on Android phone and uh, it will be visible. So I told to my partner, Daniel Kunesh, uh, that we need to solve this problem. <laughs> what about our moms? They can't see icons. This is the original presentation from the apparate. So <laughs> it was quite funny. Uh, so we created a big launcher, six big buttons and uh, nothing complicated, really simple UI. I told this to Daniel and that it will be only a weekend project, nothing else. It was okay, let's do it. And here we are, nine years have passed. We are still in the market. Big Launcher almost looked the same for the nine years, but things went quite differently. Like at first we were really afraid to release the Big Launcher into the public. It was buggy and uh, no, no languages at all. And uh, then, the apparate came, so we had to release it as soon as possible. In the apparate, I have heard about Wire Accelerator. We went to Wire Accelerator. Then we continued to develop Big Launcher. And then a year ago, we were deleted from the Play Store. <laughs> we was, uh, there were two apps, free Big Launcher, the demo, with, which was limited in functions, and full version, which was paid app but with the new restrictions for uh, permissions, uh, Google said, you are a launcher and you want uh, permissions for phone, for call book, for SMS messaging, it's not possible. You can only choose one, one, one way of handling this. You can have a telephone application, you can have SMS application, you can have a launcher. So we had to split Big Launcher into three different apps and 
we had to almost start again because it was really complicated project, but it was successful. We are back again. And uh, this is the key that uh, you have to work with what you got and uh, try almost impossible because if you if your partner is Google, then the rules can be changed anytime. And we have to adapt as uh, developers. So this was it, big launcher. The second uh, really problematic thing in Czech Republic is pricing. We were afraid of uh, releasing big launcher, the first uh, version for one dollar or one euro and it was on web expo i think 2012 i've met john van Hayara <laughs> and he asked me how much is big launcher we said okay we are one dollar but we want to raise the price for two dollars he was like no it's it's health it's a uh, it's a responsible app you have to sell it for more so we uh, raise the price to two dollars then to eight dollars you have to be sensitive on the market and now sometimes uh, we get emails that uh, people are asking if the payment for big launcher is only one time or monthly recurrent so it's this is the crazy way so uh, you have to think about this and this is the different time now that that was before so what else we do uh, we have about 50 different language versions we support almost every important language in the world so sometimes it's really nice <laughs> and so you have to handle like 50 translators pro, through different uh, applications like Upwork and Crowdin to manage the translation. It's a difficult job, but yeah, it's worth it. If you have the idea, just <laughs> here. If you have the idea for an app, today is the best day to do it. Do it right now try to communicate with your programmer or designer partner and do something and uh, okay pricing is different but still uh, there's a big potential in apps and uh, still it's worth it to develop something that solves some problem excellent thank you for keeping the time limit I think that your idea is really valuable and I think the message is do it now, don't wait for anything. So thanks. So the second uh, Lightning Talk speaker is Martin Nutz uh, and he will tell you how he controls his desk with voice commands. Again, Martin, you have seven minutes. Okay. So, uh, okay, we have a, a minute left uh, before Martin connects. So I will just repeat that uh, we are opening the 3D world for everybody, even if you don't have tickets, invite your friends. Uh, we hope that we will meet hundreds of people there. It's also a little bit of a test if we can make uh, so many or handle so many people in the app. And uh, it seems that Martin is ready now. So Martin, you have seven minutes exactly now. Hello, it's Martin here, and today I want to share uh, my experience, how I made my table to listen to voice commands. So adjustable desks are awesome. Uh, uh, but do you know what is annoying? Uh, the fact that you have to hold the button for the whole time till the desk goes up. And this is actually a restriction by leg legislation. But instead, I would like to go for a water or something in the meanwhile, you know, and so I was dedicated to solve this somehow. So let's take a look on my desk. So here, this is a controller, control unit, which is connected to the motor using uh, this looks like an old keyboard connector. 
and the motor says uh, logic data on it. So after a short Googling, I was able to find out that somebody already decrypted the protocol. And that moment, I was like totally sure that this is possible to achieve to control my table by, by voice. So what do we have here? The protocol is simple. It, it is composed of 32 bits. And uh, first 23 bits, there is this uh, sequence uh, which tells you that following eight bits are at the height of the table encoded. So you take these eight bits, negate them, reverse them, and then you have a, a height of the table in centimeters. And it turns out there was somebody who wrote an application in C Sharp using uh, Arduino and wrote a driver for this, uh, for this table. And somebody else took this driver and created almost what I wanted, Raspberry Pi connected to Arduino using ZigBee protocol and Arduino controlled the table. But as you can see, there are a lot of, lot of units you need. You need a ZigBee transmitter, ZigBee tr uh, receiver, Arduino, a Raspberry. And there was even an issue in this project to simplify, to simplify the project using Raspberry Pi only. And that's exactly what I wanted to do, to create like this man in the middle situation where uh, the Raspberry would be in between the motor and controller. And Arduino, there are uh, these pins which you can use to control the table. And on Raspberry Pi, they are very same pins. So that's what I wanted to use. And you can say that with uh, the schema of wires, this looks like just connect wires right together and it should work. Well, not really. The thing is, that there is a difference between Raspberry and Arduino. Arduino works uh, with uh, five volt uh, voltage, and also my desk works with five uh, volts, but Raspberry Pi is capable only of 3.3. So you need this uh, kind of step up uh, uh, component. And do you remember when I told you that the goal was to simplify the project, right? So this is what I end up with. It's it's like a mess. It's, this is what I call a spaghetti code in the real life, but it worked. So what about the software part? You know, I am a web developer. That means I try to use JavaScript everywhere. And I made a quick prototype and we all know that Node.js is uh, fast, right? But not in this case. Actually, to, to make it fast enough, we would have to use a write a synchronous code only, which kind of defeats the purpose of JavaScript. So my second attempt was to use a Rust. And Rust turned out to work uh, quite well. I used one thread to control the table, one thread uh, to expose REST API. And uh, you would say that uh, Raspberry Pi should be fast enough, right? But the problem is that not always. The problem came when um, there was another pro process using the CPU and then the driver starts to skip bits resulting in incorrect height reading. But at the end, it worked in 95% of, uh, of time. So I, I was okay with that. And regarding uh, the voice command part, uh, that turned out to be really easy because uh, there is this Homebridge project which is uh, basically a, a hub for HomeKit. That means it gives you a connection to a Siri for free. And the only thing I had to do was to write a simple driver which uh, uh, connected the home bridge to, to my driver to control the desk. And uh, there are a lot more plugins for HomeBridge. Uh, one more is uh, HomeBridge Alexa. And that gives you uh, uh, Alexa voice commands for free. So voice commands were really easy to do. So that's basically the end of my presentation. And uh, you know what is the conclusion? First, always use proper tools. Like writing a driver in a JavaScript was not really good idea at all. Next, uh, when you have these kind of low level operations with hardware, Try to use Arduino. Uh, you can be sure, you know, it's stable. 
you are sure that there is no other process interfering with your process. And uh, the last thing, be lazy, curious, and don't wait for a table. So this is all from me and feel free to reach out for further details. Thank you. This was funny. Thank you, Martin. I wonder if the next project that you do is a voice command chair or something like that. So um, I would just like to remind you that uh, we are inviting everybody to our 3D virtual world for the after party, which is going to take place at 6 p.m. And our next speaker will be Jakub Kochi. He's working on a decentralized solution in a South African bank. So he is interested in history of banks and he will tell us something about the origin of banks. So Jakub, you have seven minutes and you can start now. Okay, thank you. Just let me just share the slides with you. Okay, can you see my slides? Yes, we can. Great, awesome. So hi, uh, I'm Jakub and uh, today I would like to tell you something about uh, origin of banks because uh, I was uh, I was on vacation last summer in, in Italy and I realized there are some interesting places uh, related to history of money and banking and uh, that's that's something I, I would like to tell you today. So uh, yeah, I, I'm a software engineer and actually I'm building a mobile app uh, for decentralized uh, digital identity in, in React Native. And uh, you can see me on the photo in, in the right, on the right. And uh, uh, that's, that's uh, when I was in London and that's, that's the place uh, where I would like to start our small trip to, to in, in time and, 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 and into the history of, of banking because uh, before we go into the into the origins of banking, uh, uh, we should look uh, at uh, our how 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 banks uh, uh, look today. So uh, you know there, there are some like glass uh, buildings uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, that's the, the, that's a bank bank today. But actually, uh, uh, it's not maybe only about these glass buildings, but uh, we have uh, already uh, our banking in, in our mobile apps. So that's kind of uh, nicely related to the topic of, of the conference. And, uh, and just, just to say that the mobile develop, de developers are basically building uh, banking, banking of the, of the future. So uh, let's, 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 let's look uh, how uh, it all started. So our first stop in Italy is uh, is in Pisa, and uh, uh, it was it was the birthplace of uh, Leonardo of Pisa, and uh, you you probably know him as uh, as a Fibonacci, and he brought us not only his uh, sequence of numbers, but he also wrote a book book of calculation in in twelve hundred two year, and uh, he di he described there. Uh, how much easier is to use uh, uh, Arabic numerals, numerals for for commercial calculations uh, versus versus uh, Roman numerals, which were like uh, used uh, heavily in in the time in Italy, and he he described how, how it's how it's easier to to uh, calculate uh, uh, interest from loans and how to how to calculate uh, uh, currency exchanges and and and, and so so on. Uh, his his findings uh, got into Venice, which is our another st uh, another stop in our small trip. And uh, the Venice was uh, actually a uh, center of merchants uh, uh, in in the world back then. And uh, these merchants needed uh, a lot of funding for their overseas cruises and business trips. And uh, uh, the problem was that uh, to, to get money, uh, someone need, needed to, to uh, uh, give uh, gave them a loan. Uh, but Christians were prohibited to, to loan money with interests. And uh, that was kind of a problem because why, why anybody would, uh, would lend, lend money if, if uh, he, uh, he uh, uh, don't get anything from it. So, so that was a problem. 
and uh, Jew, but Jews uh, 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 were also not allowed to to do that. But uh, to to do to do, to they, they were not allowed to uh, lend money to other Jews, but they were allowed to do it to stranger uh, to Christians, basically. So uh, they they uh, they were sitting behind their tables, uh, actually at this at this uh, particular place uh, in Jewish ghetto and uh, they were providing their financial services and as i said they were sitting on a bench and that's that's actually the origin of of the word bank because it's it's from uh the word banco which means a bench so uh this place is probably uh where where the banks uh, started but it's it wasn't uh, it wasn't uh as as uh, it wasn't in form as we know uh, banks today uh, because they were mainly individuals and uh, they had a, a huge risk of, of uh, uh, some problems uh, when, when, when a ship uh, didn't return, for example, uh, they, they lost a huge amount of money. Uh, so uh, we need to move to, to another place in Italy. And this is a Florence. And uh, there was a family, Medici family. And uh, I would call them like a financial disrupt disruptors uh, in, in these times because uh, they basically built a, a huge uh, huge wealth uh, uh, based on two, two simple tricks. Uh, the first one is to build a network of, of, of business partners to their risk uh, think of their clients and losing uh, a lot of a lot of money. But uh, the, another another trick uh, like uh, more interesting was uh, was the problem with interest because they were Christians and uh, they weren't allowed to to lend money with interest, but they were allowed to exchange currencies uh, to do exchange between different currencies, and ask for some commission uh, based on this exchange. So uh, they, they did the trick uh, uh, when if you want to uh, get some euros, you would pay in dollars, but not immediately. Uh, when you get the euros, but uh, you you would pay them back uh, after after week or after month, and the longer the period, the higher was the commission, and that's the basically uh, that's the basically interest. So they were able to build a huge uh, huge wealth, and they they basically founded. Uh, we, we can say that basically they, they their their wealth uh, founded Renaissance and. Uh, 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 that, that was kind of really, really interesting uh, step from them. And uh, this is uh, Via, Via Arte della Lana, and this is the street where uh, Medici family had their its its own its own table with bench where they were sitting. So this is probably this is the place where the banking as we know it uh, today uh, started. And that's all from my side and thank you for your attention thank you very much this was really educational so our fourth and last lightning talk speaker today will be natalia yaschuk she's a photographer who focuses on capturing emotions in photography and her motto is that real is better than perfect but today she will tell us something about her recent experiment in photography. So Nati, you have seven minutes. Thank you. Um, so first of all, yes, I'm a documentary photographer uh, based in Prague, but beside my normal everyday work as a family wedding or event photographer, I do all different kinds of personal projects that helps me to just to stay creative, uh, to get outside of the box and to be really uncomfortable. That helps uh, my creativity as well. And one of the projects I have started last year in February, it is called quiet portraits or it is can be also called silent, uh, silent portraits and it's something really really unusual for me for two different reasons first is because it's quiet and i'm not that kind of person in general and the second reason is it because of portraits and i'm more for uh, those real moments that happens in real life so it was really uncomfortable but uh, very fascinating and um, in this project 
I have merged two different ideas that I wanted to test and find out how it will look like. So on one hand, um, as you probably know, because a lot of photographers are in IT world, um, every photo is a reflection of ourselves, of the photographer, the way we see world, um, the way we choose the lens, or I don't know, uh, we communicate with the person, it all is reflected in our photos. So I was wondering what will happen if I try to eliminate myself from the photos. And um, well, you can never do that uh, till the end. But um, in this case, uh, the process was that uh, mostly women were in this project, but and a couple of couples. So when people were coming to my um, home, they um, we were sitting in front of each other in about meter and a half away. But for the whole time, I have, have had my camera in front of my face, and I was not talking at all. So it was totally silence from my side, and they were allowed. Um, to talk or not to talk in those 10 minutes as they like. They didn't have any kind of uh, mobile or watch or anything to interact or uh, to distract them from themselves. And uh, I didn't interrupt them as well. So it was all up to them what, 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 uh, what they were going through. And uh, on the one side, it was this um, idea. And on the other, I wanted to test how people are... Um, uh, experiences in time because I told them that it's going to be for 10 minutes and in fact it was for 15 so yes I lied but um, I was wondering if anything happens after 10 minutes and except for two uh, cases um, I knew exactly that it's already 10 minutes because uh, something has changed in their behavior for example someone uh, was silent for 10 minutes and then they start talking or they were talking all the 10 minutes, but then they became quiet. Or they started to stretch or just to change their behavior somehow because they knew internally that something is going on and the time should be out already. And in my room, in the room that uh, these photos were taken, there is nothing to distract them. So there are just gray walls and one green wall and a window with nothing interesting behind it. They didn't have phone or watch, as I told. And it's something very unusual and uncomfortable for a person to be in front of someone and not to talk or not to get response on their own um, words or what they are going through and uh, it was really fascinating to talk to those people I, I think I didn't tell there were around 40 people in these uh, 40 cases in this uh, project and um, I can tell that I can divide them into a couple of different groups and first one they felt really uncomfortable with the silence in general because mostly we are distracted with all the different stuff around us it can be whether our um, TV or computer or even a book or when we do something we have a purpose we go for a walk we go with the uh, with the dog but this has nothing to do with the purpose and uh, they just had nothing um, to distract themselves with and uh, so for some it was really uncomfortable and for the other it was um, more than comfortable there were a couple of cases when women told me that because they have family and because they have all these distractions around them they didn't know how much they uh, miss the silence in general that they would love to have this in their schedule in their normal day but they didn't know that how helpful and healing it can be in general so there will be just a presentation going on but um so how healing it can be just to listen to yourself and to think uh, what you're thinking without anyone else telling you or just interrupting in general um, and for other it was so uncomfortable that they they really waited for those 10 minutes they thought um to end and uh, there was for example a girl she told me that she was thinking about her family she she loves so much and she can't imagine her life without people all around her and she realized that she wouldn't 
manage to live without all those people uh, she she loves so much in her life and some people were going through some personal issues and breakups and um, there was also a case when a woman found out that she has a cancer just a week before we have met and uh, i think the next day or the day before she had the first camo so it was uh, a lot of emotions real and uh, absolutely uh, sincere happened in that one room and in those uh, 15 minutes that has nothing to do with what we shoot or how we um, might look like or um, whatever people uh, might think it was just all about them and they were the only one who could heal themselves or help themselves and the one thing i have realized from this project except from for many many other reasons that it's really helpful to listen to yourself at least from time to time and it's very hard in nowadays because even if you are um you like love uh, I don't know, nature uh, and books and stuff like that, still these are distractions, but sometimes uh, not even to meditate, but just to listen to yourself. Sometimes you may find stuff that you don't really like about yourself, but it can also be very helpful to just to find them out and maybe uh, to work them through. So I think I've managed to, done, uh, to do my presentation really quickly and at the end just uh, Stay safe, uh, be healthy, listen to yourself, and thank you all the organizers for this uh, great conference that you are doing. Thank you. Wow, that was so beautiful. Such a nice presentation. Um, thank you. I'm fascinated. I really don't have any words. Really nice, really beautiful experiment. Thank you very much for your lightning talk. I think that's yes. a beautiful ending of our conference um, so i will just uh, remind all of you that uh, we are opening the 3d uh, virtual app for everybody even without tickets so please invite everybody for the after party at 6 pm and this will be all from me for mdevcamp 2020 but the final words will be said by founder and patron of mdevcamp 2020 michael schreier um, he will he will tell us the final words and say goodbye to all of you. I know that we had hundreds of people watching us, and I'm really happy that we made this the first time ever virtual end of camp. So, Michal, please, the final stage is yours. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Baro, for for the the final words. And uh, the, the end of camp 2020 is almost over, but but not yet because the, the biggest fun is, is yet to come. The after party is starting in about eight minutes, so, so almost at this, this moment. And you, you can join it, you will meet all of us there. Uh, we are back in our, our war room uh, we've used, or headquarters we used for the conference. And actually you can even invite all your friends to, af to virtual after party, maybe the first virtual after party ever and for, for that. Uh, they can just open the website, enter the, the event with the big button on, uh, on the home page, and then there is a button for virtual world where you can do or they can download uh, the very last build of, of the apps where we or our team prepared mm, some nice surprises for, for the after party. Fireworks included, but not only fireworks, as I was told. Uh, to enter the, the app, you have to use uh, this code, or your friends need to use this code instead of code on your ticket. It's MDEFCAMP 2020 Virtual World, as one word, all lower caps. So this is the code for your friends. Invite them. Uh, the after party will be open from 6 to 7 p.m. And we'll just have, ta have fun, fly, maybe meet on, on top of the Zeppelin there, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> we will test everything what is possible in, in the world. And we are, of course, uh, looking for your selfies from the, from the world. If you will post the selfies on, online, please use hashtag MDEFCAM. We are looking for them and we'll be happy to reshare all of those. Uh, maybe we'll do some competition of the best selfie. We'll see. Uh, it's, uh, the, the best thing about this virtual world is that it was actually developed specifically for this conference by our team, which is, which is sitting here. Say hi, everyone, guys. <laughs> our awesome team <laughs> who was working past days and nights to put this all together. Uh, and we actually even named it Conferomatic, and we, we will see if we are going to use it in the next year. We hope to have 
next year's conference physically in Prague again. It will be 10th annual conference and we want to make it a huge celebration. But if we will not be able to meet, we'll do it in our nice virtual world. Why not? Uh, so uh, we have some numbers update uh, from, from this day and, and yesterday. Uh, the most important number we have here is 42. Again, we still don't know what it means, but it's, it, it's still the number. Uh, today we had 20, uh, today and yesterday actually, we had 26 speakers uh, with great deep talks and lightning talks. Everything is recorded and all recordings will be available in two weeks time, by the end of the month. You will find it in newsletter of course and on our YouTube channel. We had over 560 attendees this year and we had 3,876 views of, of the talks and we actually watched all together 2,145 hours and we transferred over two terabytes of data during those two days of streaming. Um, now uh, it's my pleasure to thank uh, to, to all those who helped us put it together and that's our partners. Huge thanks goes to MSD for their great su support from past years and this year as well. Uh, big thanks to Microsoft and Bitrise. Our master partners are Kiwi.com, Showmax, and TTC Teleport, as well as JetBrains. And we also had technology partners, CDN77 and Slido, and ma media partners, Dotecomania.cz, Orbotice.cz, and Smartmania.cz. Thank you, thank you so much, partners. Without your support, this wouldn't be possible at all. And uh, thank you for being so brave for joining us for this experiment in virtual world. Huge thanks goes also to all of you attendees, because you didn't know what to expect. We didn't know neither, but, but it happened, it worked. And I think we enjoyed a lot of fun during those, do those two days, and we will even more in the after party. But the, the biggest thanks I, I have to give is to our team, which is here. <laughs> our team who put it all together, working days and nights in past weeks, and preparing, preparing speakers and virtual world and everything around. And we have our moderators here, Barry still on the stream, working there. She's the last one <laughs> <laughs> behind the computer. We are ready for the party almost. Uh, and I, I guess that's it from me. That's it from MDEF Camp 2020. And see you on after party and see you in 2021. Bye bye. <laughs>